Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Headspin, the only game on British TV where the big prize is to keep the game going. First question's for you, Richie. If you're Prime Minister, how do you explain why household energy bills have soared when energy-producing companies made record-breaking profits? A. It's the fault of an evil, nasty bad man to the east. B. We've got to reward talent so the best people can get us out of this mess. Or C. It's scandalous. The government should have weaned us off fossil fuels in time. Should we ask our live home audience? They seem to have a clear answer on this one. No, I'll take my chances and go for B. Feels right to me. Congrats! Invisible Jury says you're right! First category, housing. How much is the government spending on the affordable housing programme? 11.5 billion over four years. And how much more will be spent on subsidising private landlords? Four times more! Sorry, wrong question. Back to the game! Justin, let's see how you spin! You're the Chancellor. We've got an investment gap of £33 billion a year to get on track for climate targets. An opportunity to create millions of unionised green jobs. How would you play Deal or No Green Deal? I'll go with No Green Deal. Too costly. We've got to be responsible. Independent experts say an increased investment of only 2 to 5% of GDP is needed to get on track for climate. Is this your final answer? Yes. Alright, money stays where it is. Paul, you're a banker, but if you were in charge, what would you do to make better services? Trains, water, affordable, renewable energy? Instead of leaving it to corporations hoping they'll invest in our futures, would you nationalise? Here are the options from our invisible jury. I'm being told the correct answer is... C! You get 500 points! Would you like to pay them forward, backwards, or sideways? I'll donate to Richie's table. Hey, wait a minute. We seem to have a surprise contestant. I'm Mabel. I've been watching this show go down the drain, so today I've come here to see how it works. You didn't show how much political donations the banks make in total. Mabel, dear, you'll have to follow this nice security card, unless... Let's ask our audience. Folks at home, can she stay? Well, that's pretty clear. Mabel, take to the podium and have a spin. Maybe I'll play it differently too. What's the gap between the amount people get from universal credit and cost of living payment and the actual cost of living? Correct. How much more public money would there be if the top 350 richest families in the UK paid 2% more tax on their assets? Well, don't let him answer. He's probably on the rich list. The real answer is £20 billion per year. Enough to build 145,000 affordable new homes. Another turn, Justin? Today's your last day as Chancellor. What a twist. Justin followed in the footsteps of every Chancellor for the last 40 years and joined the financial sector. Finance isn't the only sector politicians favour. From every pound the fossil fuel companies pay into the public purse from a tax called the Energy Profits Levy, government hands back 91p if they use it to fund new oil and gas. While renewables have to pay a 45% levy from the new electricity generator levy when prices are high. Why does government have money to give energy companies a tax break, but nurses like me don't get a proper pay rise? The Bank of England said public sector wages can't go up. It'll push up inflation even more. Nope. Right now inflation is being driven by high fossil fuel prices and greedy corporations increasing their profit margins. The Bank of England sent interest rates soaring this year. Any guess who that will mostly benefit? You're right, the big banks. Bad luck, audience. Your loan repayments will be filling those coffers. What I'm not supposed to say is that the rules can change. Money flows can be redirected. Instead of squeezing working people to satisfy shareholders, government has plenty of options to pay for investments needed to fix the cost of living and climate crises. How about we start by taxing the rich, especially the banks making excess profits from people like us? 
then cap political donations that big banks and others give to politicians to control the game and stop ministers going on to cushy private sector jobs. In the next election, don't accept the answer that there's no money. The climate and cost of living crises have common roots, a financial and political system that chases shareholder profits over everything else. The revolving door between government and vested interest means the current flow of money benefits reckless big banks, landlords and fossil fuel giants. Too much public money gets misdirected or wasted, but we can rewrite the rules of the game. The government doesn't have to balance the books the same way a household does. Public investment in climate action, affordable homes and social care will actually save the public purse money in the future, alongside nationalising essential services like energy, trains and water. It's not true that public ownership is more expensive. Cutting out middlemen and unnecessary profit margins is an opportunity to save money and rein in corporations who don't have public interest at heart. Share this film to help others change the game.